All right. That's it. Live on Facebook. Yes, we are. Live on 93.5? Yes, we are. All right. Well, listen, first show of the new year. Good morning to you. Happy New Year, everybody. My name is Adam Handler. I'm your case handler. Uh, Recharged the batteries a little bit last week. Watched some great, great shows uh, with Conrad and... uh, and uh, Alan and really getting the message out. Uh, My name again is Adam Handler. I'm the partner of the personal injury practice here at Pollock, Pollock, Isaac and DeSico, otherwise known as PPID. We've been doing this show cruising with the case handler consistently now for about a year at this time slot, uh, 9.30 a.m. on 93.5 FM. We're also uh, streaming on Facebook and we also stream later to our Instagram platform. So if you could safely do so now, or safely do so later, you know, check out the case handler on Instagram, check out PPID on Instagram and Facebook and all those platforms. You'll be connected to our firm. We certainly are attorneys that care, certainly are attorneys that do it very, very, very differently. Uh, Let me give out your phone, our phone number uh, a few times, um, 844-774-3529, or easy to remember, 844 PPID law. PPID is the initials of our firm, 844 PPID law. You got a legal question, we got a legal answer. You got a legal problem, we got a legal solution. We are a full service law firm here in Manhattan. Immigration, personal injury, real estate, criminal defense, employment law, uh, you name it, we got it. And uh, I'm down with PPID. Nelson is down with PPID. We know Conrad, he's got his name twice. He's down with PPID. Squeeze from Jamaica to start the new year. Uh, you got to let us know. You got to let the people know out there. Are you down with PPID? You know I'm down with PPID. In 2020, I was. In 2021, I am. We got a lot of ground to cover, man. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We've got the personal injury attorney, Mr. Adam Handler. We've got the immigration attorneys, Nelson Madrid. We've got Conrad Pollock. And we're gonna jump it off. Conrad, you are the architect of everything that's been going on here. So I want, and you look, I mean, you got the tie on, we, we gotta let you lead off, man. You know, tell the folks, okay, what you wanna say about immigration, what do you wanna say about the firm, what do you wanna say about this year? It's going to be a mega year, and I need to know what you have to say about it as we jump things off. Well, first off, happy new year. And uh, yes, new year, new look. So uh, I'm trying to, uh, if t- I'm turning over a new leaf. I'm actually trying, to look like a lawyer this year. Right? <laughs> I just act like one and, and be one, but I want to look like one as well, at least today. First time on uh, this week. We'll see how long it lasts. Um, anyway, um, new year, you know, it doesn't, from an immigration perspective, it doesn't really feel like a new year because it's just more and more of the same. Uh, January 20th, I think, is, is really, as far as immigration is concerned, I think January 20th will be the day, will be New Year's Day. And of course, what is January 20th? That is the day the new administration uh, will be inaugurated. We'll have a new president and uh, all this craziness hopefully will come to an end. Although, I don't know if it's ever going to end as long as this guy, uh, our current president, is still above ground. But um, some news, um, unfortunately, the travel ban. Uh, has been extended um, till March 31st. Uh, one of the last thing, it was due to expire on December 31st. And one of the last things the administration did on um, the 31st on New Year's Eve was to extend the travel ban another three months. Uh, my guess is it's not going to be terminated by Biden. Uh, we too, too politically risky, um, but I believe that it will, he will let it expire. On March 31st. So, so those of you out there that are waiting for your relatives to come into the United States, the cases are pretty much done. Uh, you're at the end of the consular process. Um, my guess is after March 31st, you'll be able to continue with your case and uh, get your, get your relatives in soon thereafter. Um, Nelson, anything uh, else that we need to talk about from an immigration perspective in terms of new stuff? I mean, you've been on vacation for the last month, I know, but time to. <laughs> Have that cup of coffee and work your way back in. Um, You know, actually, uh, hearings, hearings on the non-detained immigration docket uh, have been postponed through, I believe, January 21st. 
January 21st or 18th. Yeah. But right. we've been talking about this since March, since the pandemic, every two or three weeks, the immigration service in New York uh, issues a statement saying they're postponing their hearings. These are non-detained hearings, people that are not incarcerated. Uh, they're, they're postponing their deportation hearings two or three weeks out. And that's going to continue until everybody's vaccinated. So uh, you know, if you have a hearing, if you have a deportation hearing, where you're supposed to, in New York, we're just talking about New York City now, 26 Federal Plaza. If you have a hearing in New York City um, and it's scheduled for the next couple of months, you can pretty much rest assured it's going to be adjourned. Uh, it might be put back years, by the way, but it will likely be adjourned. I don't see that changing until April and May, personally. Nelson? Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I totally agree. Yep. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Cruising with a Case Handler, a show on immigration and personal injury. Case Handler, have you settled any cases over the uh, month of December? Have you settled any cases? Yeah, there? yeah, we, 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 we were hot in December. Um, you know, usually things tend to, to cool down a little bit because everybody's away and you know, vacations and, and, and holidays, but we, we had a nice December and, you know, the, our final numbers for, for 2020 are in. Um, we haven't shared them yet, uh, but I'm happy to do so now. Um, you know, uh, the biggest settlement we had uh, in December was right before Christmas was 194,500. 194,500. It was a case against the New York City Transit Authority, uh, up in the Bronx, our lady is, uh, our client is waiting at a red light and a bus pulling out of a bus stop uh, just was not paying attention. And uh, they actually rammed into her while she was stopped. A police officer did witness the accident, which is a rare thing. Usually the police report says, he said this, she said that police and it, you know, they write police officer did not witness, but generally based on points of contact or maybe a witness statement, um, you know, the, the, the cop does assign fault, but in this case, it was pretty clear cut. Uh, they did witness it. Um, she had a, a shoulder injury, uh, made a full recovery, and we were able to get a wonderful settlement for her. Uh, that was certainly a case that, you know, could be lingering on for another year or two, especially up in the Bronx. They're so backed up and there's still no jury trial. So, uh, she made a wise decision to accept a very, very reasonable offer. And uh, the final numbers are in, like I said, uh, 20510557 dollars and 73 cents. Let me give that number again. So this year, Pollock Pollock, Isaac DeSico's personal injury department, the case handler team, your boy, the case handler, along with Matthew, my associate, and Sandra and Ralston and Rollin and Sandy, my paralegals, settled for our clients, right? Because there was no jury trials this year, settlements, $20,510,557.73. And you know what squeezed the number? The, most, the, the number I'm most proud of that is the 73 cents because it just shows you we don't leave a penny on the table for our clients uh you know medical bills need to be paid time out of work need to be paid and sometimes those are in crooked numbers and we go for the maximum compensation for our clients a lot of law firms uh were not able to do a, a fraction of that just because they're just not equipped or maybe they're just not good enough uh, or, or maybe they just don't have the skills and the connections necessary to do well for their clients. But we, uh, we did a fabulous job this year. Uh, it was our second highest year ever at the firm. Last year was uh, 2019 was 25 million. Um, the courts were open though. So to do nearly that uh, with uh, the courts being closed for 80% of the year is, is something I'm really proud of, Squeeze. And I know you're proud of as well. Oh, come on, man. I'm, I'm humbled by those numbers, especially the 73 cents. You know, do you think people who are like rolling around at the top of the hour throughout the station can do what you do? You're the man. Why do you believe the show is named after you? Cruising with the case handler, Adam Handler partner at the firm PPID, Paula Pollock, Isaac, and Masico. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, what are we talking about? If you get into an accident, this is the man you need, Adam Handler. His phone number is 844-774-3529. Construction accidents, medical malpractices, slip and fall, car accidents, you name it. The attorney you need at PPID is 
Adam Handler. We call him the shark. We call him the beast. We'll come up with other names for him. Mm -hmm. The case handler, the hot stepper. 844-774-3529. The fire starter. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> fire starter. Gets it started. Listen, you know what, Squeeze? We, we just do things, you know, the right way. And it, you, you can't be a successful attorney if you don't have clients. And you're not going to have clients if people don't trust you. Our reputation speaks for itself. Immigration, personal injury, those other departments. You know, we've been doing this for decades and decades, and we've been doing it the right way. And people out there know, you know, who we are and, and what we do and, and how we do it. And this show is just, you know, a reinforcement of that. We're on every day letting people know, you know, how we're doing and, and, and giving them some insight as to changes in the law or, you know, uh, some settlements that we do. But it, it really does come down to reputation in this business squeeze. Reputation is everything. If you want to go with somebody that you hear at the top of the hour or just on a billboard, you know, we wish you the best of luck. And that goes for all areas of law. But if you want an attorney that's going to fight for you like family, that's going to fight to make this year, 2021, uh, a better year uh, for you and your loved ones than last year, then I, I sincerely, sincerely suggest that you keep our number, save our number, and use our number if, God forbid, you ever need it. I see the numbers on Facebook this morning are, are very, very strong. That makes me so happy because people are tuning in. Uh, there's other places you could be right now, other things you could be listening to, but you're here with me. You're here with the case handler. You're here with the maestro. You're here with the maverick. You're here with Squeeze. Um, and, and that's because, you know, we, we do really uh, strive to provide the, the utmost quality in everything we do. So thank you so much uh, for that. And I'm just really excited about this year and the changes we'll have in immigration law, uh, the changes we'll have um, uh, in other areas of law, tax law, you know, things are, things are definitely changing and getting more excited. You want to be on top of that. So make sure you tune into this show throughout the year. And we're going to be having some town forum meetings with, of course, PPID, ladies and gentlemen, throughout this year. So um, we, will, we will be giving you more information on that. If you have any insights or ideas, also, please reach out to us. If you're a church, if you're an organization, I implore you to call PPID at 844-774-3529. We can come to you by way of Zoom. We can get your entire audience involved, and we can extend a lot of help to you by way of the firm. A whole lot coming this year. We're going to be extremely aggressive in helping out the community. So please give us a call at 844-774-3529. Or hit us on Facebook. Hit us on Instagram. Ruti and my marketing team, they'll hit you up. 844-774-3529. Got a few questions here, gentlemen, on the immigration side. But I just wanted, um, Nelson, if you could just expand a little bit on DACA again, what happened towards the latter part of last year, the fact that people should actually get moving right now when it comes to DACA, if you don't mind. You know, we actually just got, uh, I saw I was uh, checking emails, as uh, Conrad said, I uh, have been on vacation for some time, uh, but I was checking emails and uh, we just got a DACA case approved, um, which is pretty great if you ask me. Um, so DACA is basically deferred action for childhood arrivals. Um, and basically, this is something that uh, this administration had tried to do away with and was no longer accepting or processing these applications. Uh, DACA does not confer legal status on anyone. It just basically allows them the right to remain and work legally inside of the United States. Uh, in order to be eligible for DACA, um, you have to demonstrate that you were under the age of 31 as of June 15th, 2012, that you came to the United States before reaching your 16th birthday, that you have continuously resided in the United States since June 15th, 2007 up to the present, that you were physically present in the United States on June 15th, 2012, and at the time of making your request for consideration of deferred action, that you had no lawful status on June 15th, 2012, that you are currently in school, have graduated or obtained a certificate of completion from high school or GED, and that you have not been convicted of a felony, significant misdemeanor or three or more misdemeanors and do not 
otherwise pose a threat to national security or public safety. Um, again, uh, this administration um, had basically tried to do away with DACA. Um, a court, a federal judge here in New York uh, basically recently said that uh, the USCIS has to start accepting and processing these applications. So people who have never previously applied can now apply. People who have applied whose DACA expired um, can now reapply or renew their DACA. However, as I mentioned, um, when I discussed the requirements, if you have been arrested and have a criminal record, um, I would strongly encourage you speak with an attorney before you go and apply for this on your own. Um, there are some nuances. Um, you know, for instance, if you have a DWI conviction, uh, one DWI conviction would disqualify you from DACA. So that's important to get out there. Yeah, Nelson, um, I interrupt. I, I've mentioned this previously, and I was probably the, well, not actually, this is a different case. Um, we have, we signed up a case of a client who applied for DACA on his own years ago, back in 2014, and was denied. Um, he had a notary or somebody in the neighborhood doing his application. Anyway, the application ended up getting denied because he had a criminal issue. Um, turns out he showed up in our office a couple weeks back after you heard about the news that new application, new applications would be accepted again. Um, and he would need his application and it turns out that we're of the opinion that he qualifies. So he has now reapplied. Um, we're optimistic his case is going to be approved. But my point is, uh, if you've applied previously and the case was denied, your, your DACA, DACA application was denied, it may have been denied improperly or inaccurately. Uh, you now have a chance to do that application again. Look, if you have a criminal issue, if you've been, if you were arrested for, I don't know, burglary, you're not going to qualify. But if it was a, a, a borderline issue, as it was with this, with this new client of ours that, uh, that retained us, uh, you may have a chance to reapply. So it, it's worth take, taking a look. Uh, if you have a question about it, you should definitely reach out to us. Absolutely. Right. And, and I think we've said this before, and it's important to stress this point. You know, a lot of these immigration officers are not necessarily attorneys. And they do make mistakes. They make a lot of mistakes. Um, and unless you actually have an attorney who actually knows the law, understands the law, um, your, your, the, the cards are stacked up against you. You know, they're not going to approve that. You're not on your own going to convince an officer on how the law should be interpreted. Um, I think that job is better suitable for an attorney, a competent attorney. You know, Nelson, oh. that's particularly true under this administration. I mean, the, this administration hired a lot of new people, immigration examiners, more immigration enforcement officers than examiners. But basically, the people that have been that have been hired have no training or minimal training, nothing like what they were previously receiving. Most of the people that have been hired by this administration were hired based on their political preferences. I, I, I haven't seen any applications lately employment applications, but my guess is that on those employment applications, the number one question was, you know, are you pro or anti-immigration? If you're pro, well, sorry, find yourself another job. If you're anti, you're hired. <laughs> wow. Well, Once again, I'm obviously exaggerating, right? But there is, there is, some, no. there is some truth in what I am saying. There is. We're all laughing about it. Nelson, come on, you know. Well, listen, listen. I mean, I, again, a prime example is how your application can now be rejected because you left something blank. Right. I mean, think about it. You could potentially blow a deadline because you left the question blank instead of simply putting not applicable. This is not a question, you know, like what's your date of birth? This is a question, you know, like that doesn't apply to you, whatever. You know, name, uh, name all your previous spouses. Well, I was never married. So you leave it right. blank, right? No, not good enough. If you write, if you leave that space blank, your application could get denied. It certainly gets returned as opposed to if you say not applicable, NA, right? You have to, if you don't say NA, they will deny your case or, or return it. And keep in mind, some of these applications and forms are time sensitive, right? So you know, for instance, let's talk about a U visa very quickly, right? Certification expires after six months. 
if you wait until the very last minute to file that, and now you've left something blank, you're going to have to basically start that process all over again, because now your certification has expired. And immigration may not want to accept an expired certification or may eventually issue a request for evidence asking for an updated certification. This is a more, a, a more uh, important situation. Let's say uh, you're applying for your, for your child and he's under 21, all right? He's 20 years old now. You have a year to get that petition done because after 21, that petition change, the classification changes. The case will take years to, to finish. If you submit that application form, that I-130, and you leave blanks, not not intentionally or, or, or just the, the, the question didn't apply in your case, you leave it blank, they return that application three, four, five months later, you just lost a lot of time that could result in your child taking years to get a green card as opposed to taking a year. Absolutely. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the reason why we believe that you should not do your case yourself. You should not go to the notary on the corner, the individual down in Eastern Parkway and Gunnell Road, wherever, Sutpin, whatever. No, go to the firm, PPID, Paula Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. Let them do your case. Everyone that would like to reach out, hire the firm right now, give them a call. The number is 844-774-3529. Call them, schedule an appointment, okay? See Nelson on Zoom, see Conrad on Zoom, go in, whatever but make the connection with them right now. Once again, the number for the firm to handle your immigration situation, your immigration case is 844-774-3529. The year's starting up, Biden is coming in, a lot's gonna be rolling in. You better get started right now. 844-774-3529. Before we get to the questions, Adam Handler, can you share a true success story with us? And then we'll come back to the questions we have. And by the way, everyone on Facebook, we love the fact that the numbers are up. Do us a favor. Can you share to at least 20 people for us or 30 people? It's a new year. Or, or 21 people. You used to say 20. Now I'm going to say 21 at least. All right? So please share with everyone what's going on here with this show on personal injury, on immigration, a full-service law firm, Paula Pollock, Isaac, and Seco, PPID. Yes, Adam, I see you got the screen up right here on Facebook. We do, we do. And, you know, looking at these pictures, you know, it, it makes me happy for, for, for many reasons. But in, in some ways, it's, it's almost like a year in review, my, my, my resume. You know, this is a results-based business. And for those, again, listening on 93.5 FM, thank you so much. But if you can, take it one step further. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out on Instagram. Check out the Case Handler. Check out PPID. You'll see what we're talking about here. You know, we like to post our, our, our victories um, on, on social media, of course, with the permission of the clients. And, you know, they got smiling faces under those masks and holding those big, big checks. You know, we've done some incredible things. Um, uh, I, I'm Hi, please, Whoops, sorry about that. I, I personally Hi, have uh, settled over uh, at this point, you know, I'm going to call it probably uh, in the next week or so about $130 million for the clients. Uh, over the course of my career. And we like to show these true life success stories because we want to let you know that, you know, there's people out there that never expected uh, for disaster to strike, never expected they'd get into an accident. Um, and then, you know, unfortunately, bad things happen to good people and the way they correct themselves uh, is to hire the right lawyer to fight for them. I mean, you can look at these cars, look at this $90,000 settlement we had for Eve. I mean, you know, somebody ran a stop sign, blew right into her side, airbag went off, you know, serious, serious accident. Um, or we have, uh, you know, this case right here, um, uh, the $50,000 settlement we had for Olivia, you know, rear-ended um, while she's on the job. She worked for the city of New York Department of Transportation. She was driving one of the city vehicles. Somebody just slammed right into the back of her, crushed the whole back in $50,000, which was the maximum amount we got her, uh, which is the maximum amount she was able to get. We got her for her. And then, you know, recently the $650,000 settlement from, from David. And Squeeze, if you can read that quote for me, I'd appreciate it because really the, the quotes are everything. You know, the quotes really do show what the client thinks about our services once that case is wrapped up. Okay, so from my namesake in Brooklyn, it's incredible what they did for me. The case handler did a good job for me and I have no doubt that they'll do a good job for you too. David from Brooklyn, $650,000 that the case handler settled for him. So that's the reason why, ladies and gentlemen, Dial the number, store the number. More than likely, you will not need that number now for personal injury. You may need it for immigration, all right? 
but dial the number, let it ring 20 seconds and store it. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. 650. Yeah. Thousand dollars. You know what's so great about this story? We we talk about cases like this before, but you know, on our social media, and that's why I say, you know, really try to check us out on, on Instagram. Check out the case handler, check out the case handler on Facebook and Instagram because we do post these things. Look at this letter that I received uh from the insurance company when we first filed the claim. If you could read that this section right here, uh this second paragraph. This is what they sent to me uh, when we first filed the claim. This is a trip and fall on a crack. On a, on a sidewalk. Can you read that for me, Squeeze? Absolutely. Our investigation has determined there was no liability to our client for this loss. Therefore, we must respectfully decline payment of your client's claim. If you have any questions, you're free to contact me at the number below. So, so basically, we filed the claim. They tell me to 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 you know shove it with the where the sun don't shine. We're not paying you anything. We filed the lawsuit. Two years later. 650,000. I mean, we've told stories like that before, but I love being able to show it. You know, it's not just talk. It, it, we can actually show these letters, insurance companies saying, we ain't paying you a dime. And you know what a lot of lawyers would do after they receive that letter squeeze? Yep. What, repeat, I didn't hear that. What, what, you know what a lot of lawyers out there would do after they receive the letter from the insurance company okay. saying, we're not paying you? You have, how many people have come to you because that has happened before? Correct. You know, you know, my my lawyer said I have no case. I have to get another lawyer. Exactly. Well, we take the case and, and we win big money. It happens all the time. We don't take no for an answer here. You know, there are obviously cases yeah. that, that you just can't win um, because you can't prove them. But it, we're, we're experienced, we're skilled, and, and we're passionate. And if we think we can win, we're, we're going we're gonna to try our best. And, and this is a perfect example. You know, they want to pay you zero. We say not acceptable litigate the hell out of the case and then we get 650 grand for our client i am the case handler we are pollock pollock isaac to we appreciate you spending your time with us this morning we are wishing all of you wonderful listeners of 93.5 fm a happy new year you are the community that has embraced me for nearly two decades and it's the community that i and we as a firm have embraced back it's a perfect match we are exceptional attorneys. Pollock, Pollock, Isaac DeSico, 844-774-3529, or easy to remember, 844-PPID-LAW. Absolutely. And as we get to the top of the hour on the radio station right now, everyone that's tuning in to 93.5 FM, whether you're an immigrant or not, this is your full service law firm, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac and DeSico. Dial their number, store their number for immigration, for personal injury, for real estate, you name it, business. Make the call, 844-774-3529. Go to my Facebook page, David Squeeze Anik, and the Case Handler page, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac and DeSico's page. You know, connect with us, leave a message, text us, email us, 844-PPID-LAW. That gets 10 o'clock. Right there. Anyway, we continue right here on Facebook. Gentlemen, are you ready for some questions? I guess they are ready. Batter up. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to place your questions, you may do so by actually placing your questions in the comments section on Facebook or joining our uh, WhatsApp page. Thank you, Tracy, for getting the um, questions over to us. And let's get the first question, the first immigration question of the year to be asked. Um, good day. Are there any updates about the expiration of the proclamation? I guess yeah. they're talking about the ban, right? No, that's the travel ban, what I mentioned earlier. Yes, it's been extended to March 31st. Uh, one of the last things that Trump did before uh, he uh, went on his usual nightly rants on New Year's Eve uh, was he extended the travel ban for three months. Uh, Nobody knows what Biden is going to do, but my guess is he's not going to he's not going to uh, terminate it. Although we hope he does. But the good news is he certainly won't extend it beyond March thirty first. So uh, yeah. if your case is toward the end of its process, uh, there's a good chance that your family member will be joining you in the spring or summer of this year. You know what I find interesting, Conrad, is it's something you mentioned previously on the show. These extensions and these things do typically happen on weekends. 
where people are just in the dark and you know yeah. it's yeah and and you you don't really know what's happening unless you you you're obviously following it um and that's important to point out because obviously if you do have an attorney um your attorney should be aware of what's going on okay all right. Once again, the number for the law firm, PPID, 844-774-3529. Give them a ring. Give them a call. You know, get it done, ladies and gentlemen. 844-774-3529. Ask for Conrad, the maestro. Ask for Nelson Madrid, the maverick. If you have ever been arrested, by the way, and you're seeking immigration benefits, let me hold my head. Don't try to do it yourself. All right? And don't go to another attorney. Ask for Nelson at the firm. 844 844- Seven seven four three five two nine. Let's get to another question here. I am going to apply for my F one visa. My maternal aunt lives in the United States. She applied for an immigrant visa, family visa, nine years before. And in July twenty twenty, we received a letter containing NVC case number and invoice ID. So guide me, please. Is this beneficial for me that I'm also under processing for my immigrant visa? And before the attorneys answer. Make sure you hire PPID for this. Attorneys? I, I'm, I'm confused. Who applied? Her aunt? Yeah, her maternal aunt lives in the United States. She applied for an immigrant visa, family visa, nine years before. And in July 2020, we received a letter containing NBC case number and invoice. All right. ID. All right. First off, um, an aunt cannot apply for a nephew or a niece. There is no classification. That's what I thought. Number two, um, I'm assuming that she's talking about the, her aunt applying for her mother. An aunt can apply for a sister, you know, which I'm assuming that's the case here. So the aunt is US citizen applied for her sister, who is the mother or father of this person who's sending this email, um, who is asking this question. Uh, a case like that takes 10, 15, 20 years. So it sounds right. Uh, they just got the notification. It's been about 10 years. so. That's good. Uh, it means the case has been approved and it's it's processing. As long as the travel ban's in place, they're not going to be able to finish it. Now, she's applying for an F-1 visa. Uh, I, an F-1, I don't know if she's using the right term here. F-1 visa is for a student. It's not a green card. She might be talking about an F-1 visa classification. That's different. I, I, I'm not sure what the situation is here, but uh, she would need to provide more details. If she's applying for a student visa, the fact that she applied for a green card previously will definitely impact her ability to get a student visa. Okay. Odds are she won't get it because of that. All right, no problem. Um, okay, uh, question number three. And, and by the way, before we um, actually um, continue here, something that we're going to be doing this year, listeners and viewers, we're actually going to let you know some people um, come on the show and ask their questions live so they can speak with the attorneys and all of that. Can't get long-winded, but, you know, I'll be moderating that to make the show be a little bit more interactive. So, you know, if you have questions, you can, I'll be, I'll be providing a link where you can link up with us and get on the show and actually speak. The number once again for the firm, however, to do it directly with them, to hire them, to see them, okay, is 844-774-3529. And I see people have been calling. That's what should happen. It's now 2021. Stop screwing around. Stop playing around. Hire the attorneys already. A lot is coming. 844-774-3529. That's 844-PPIDLAW. Once again, please share the page that you're watching on right now. Question number three on the immigration side. Can you expedite your case if the priority date is not yet current? Is citing a medical reason for the petitioner a legitimate explanation to expedite a request and will there be any disadvantages to your case if they reject your expedite request? Category F31 says here. All right, F, F3, that's a married uh, son or daughter of a US citizen. Um, no, short answer. You can't expedite, if your priority date's not current, you're not going anywhere. You can always try. Uh, I don't know who you'd even ask because uh, I've never seen it happen. Uh, that's, that's the law. I mean, that, that's, you can't cut your place in line. Um, that's why so many people sneak into the United States illegally because they don't want to wait 15 years to get their green card. So they come in ahead of time illegally. Uh, I'm certainly not suggesting that this person does that, of course. Um, but you could, I mean, 
I guess if you found a place to make an effort to try to speed it up, it wouldn't affect your case because they probably, I doubt you'd even get a response. Okay. All right. So here's one. Um, I used to travel on the hotel program. In 2008, my boyfriend's mother filed for him and he migrated to America. At that time, I was in the US on a work visa. So I did not go home. I stayed in America and we got married in February 2009 and had a baby. That same year, he filed for me. But when the paperwork came, I had to go to Jamaica for the interview. So I came to Jamaica and was denied the visa. Reason being, I overstayed on my visa in America. When my husband became a US citizen, he refiled for me. I went to the embassy and was denied again. Man, this is the reason why you use an attorney. Let them handle and do all the dirty work. Use PPID. They say there was a 10 year waiver on me, so I can't get a visa till 10 years. The 10 years will be up in two years. Do you think they will give me the visa this time or is it a waste of money filing again? So Nelson, what, how, how, what does that sound like? Huh? Actually, it's unlawful presence. So uh, basic situation, right? That, that, like you said, squeeze. They did it themselves. She left the country, and and as a result, has to stay there for ten years. I mean, perfect example of somebody who, for whatever reason, chose to do it themselves. And look at the price that they're paying. Right. And she would have been eligible for a provisional waiver, no, Conrad? Yep. Depends on when she did it. Uh, but it sounds like, I mean, the waiver has been in place since 2000, what, 13, 14, whatever it is, 12. Um, so, yeah, she could have done a provisional waiver. Absolutely. Which would have limited her time abroad. Um, she would have gone abroad prior to her interview. And obviously the waiver would have been approved. Assuming, though, that it happened before the provisional waiver went into effect she would have still been eligible for a 601 waiver because she has a qualifying relative right. uh, for being married to a United States citizen. So what happens is once you go to the interview, you can't file the waiver until they first find you inadmissible, right? And he or she would be inadmissible because she's accrued unlawful presence. So at that point, her husband could have technically done a waiver for her. And with that waiver, she could have returned to the United States. You know, waiting for 10 years outside of the United States is she's waiting because I guess she doesn't want to do a waiver, but there was a way for her to come back prior to those 10 years. Or because they're ignorant of the whole, you know, process. She could still do the waiver today. I mean, or she could wait the two years. After the two years, assuming everything else is in order, she should get the green card. Why the, her, her husband filed again? I don't know. They should have just submitted because, the waiver. Because the, the person on the corner under the L told them that that they could go ahead and they could file. That's the problem. You know, that's the problem. And, you know, a lot of people also jump on the internet and they start Googling, they start reading, and they're reading sometimes from sites that are not even valid and certified and just taking information and trying it themselves. That's the reason why we have a law firm that's been around for 60 years. Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. If you're watching this, please do not make the mistake on filing yourself. Do not make the mistake in going to some consultant, your pastor, your, you know, whomever. Call PPID, 844-774-3529. If you're watching this, share the number with someone on Facebook. 844-PPID-LAW. That's 844-774-3529. You know, Squeeze, and if I could just jump in for a second. You know, a waiver is not as simple, excuse me, as just completing a form and mailing in that form. There's evidence that has to accompany that form. You know, uh, one of the things we do is we prepare a legal brief that accompanies both the application and the evidence and basically argues all of the reasons or, or points out all of the reasons why this waiver should be approved, right? And this is something a non-attorney would struggle with, right? Because they're not familiar with the law. They're not familiar with the cases. They don't know how to cite. You know, um, but these are all things, obviously, we are able to do for our clients. Absolutely. Nelson Madrid, ladies and gentlemen, we call him the Maverick, one of the partners at the firm. Got to say thanks to him for actually being here on the show. His number is 844-774-3529. Conrad Pollock, the managing partner at the firm. They're all practicing attorneys. Okay, we call him the maestro. He's the one who has put it all together. Want to say thanks to him for also being here on the show. 
the first show of the year, 2021. It was impeccable in my opinion. Thank you so much, Conrad. And of course, the case handler himself, the man of the moment, the multi-million dollar man for the year 2020. And now we're in 2021. It has begun. Adam Andler, take us out, man. Well, listen, we'll see what we can do today. As of right now, uh, PPID has settled zero dollars uh, in, in personal injury settlements in 21. But I have a feeling uh, a couple calls are going to be coming in today. I got some emails over the weekend from some insurance companies. Sorry, I was away. Let's talk Monday. So uh, we'll get off to a hot start. And uh, we, we need to. You know why? Because our clients are counting on us. Uh, and that's going to drive all of us in our respective areas uh, of law and, and the way we practice to do the best possible work. Like I said, we are exceptional attorneys, um, but we are only as good as our last case. And we strive to treat your case like it's our most important case. We strive to treat you like family, not just like a file. Uh, again, we are Pollock, Pollock, Isaac DeSico, uh, 844-774-3529 or easy to remember, of course, 844 844- PPID law. We'll catch you all tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in uh, and uh, have yourself a great day. Before you go, are you guys seeing people in person now? We are, but we strongly suggest Zoom, Skype, whatever works, um, especially for, for this month, next month with the spikes and the virus in the city. You know, we're trying to be as cautious as possible, uh, both with regard to our clients as well as our staff. Um, so, yeah, in emergency situations, we're seeing people, yes, but we strongly recommend Zoom meetings, which we can do everything. We're fully automated. You know, we, we, we've been doing our work for the last nine months, basically, without seeing clients in person. So um, if somebody has a pressing matter, call us. We'll set up a Zoom. If we decide it's necessary to meet in person, we can certainly do it. Yeah. Interestingly, uh, most people have been, uh, you know, taking the, the virtual option, you know, just like this format here. Um, because, you know, they don't have to come into the city and it's, it's a little bit easier. So most people prefer this for right now. Um, but of course, we are here to accommodate our clients. And if it's not possible um, or if it's uh, something that they feel very strongly about, you know, we will make the appropriate accommodation to balance, you know, the preference of the client, but also, the, you know, the, the well-being of everybody here at our firm. Yeah, if we can also, um, moving forward, um, ask Ruti, um, the appointment link, I think you guys have one on your page. We can just post it in our comment section throughout the show. That will be great. So people can actually book an appointment right there online, if possible. I don't know. And um, and yeah, and, and right now, I just want to remind everyone, consultations are free if you retain the attorneys. It's free. If you retain the attorneys, it's free. Absolutely free. As a matter of fact, you don't pay for the consultation. All right. So that's the reason why you're going to hear us talking about hiring their training. It's time to stop procrastinating. We, you've seen and heard the nightmares that have happened throughout the year and, and before what happens when you try to do your case yourself. So just hire the attorneys. The consultation is free when you hire them. You know, call them at 844-774-3529. Hire them. It's free. And I'm sure they'll even give you a discount on their fees. I have nothing to do with that. Okay. 844-774-3529. The law doesn't provide for me to help you with that. However, I can tell you this much. Consultation is free if you hire them. I've learned that much from them. 844-774-3529. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Great show, great start. We're looking for a whole lot more this year, 2021. Thank you so much, Squeeze. Take care. Tomorrow nice. morning, folks, 9.30 a.m., 93.5, and on the multiple Facebook pages, PPID, The Case Handler, yours truly, David Squeeze Anakin. Thank you. Have an amazing day.